it's Odette here and on today's episode of Get Your Greek On, I am here with Zoe and Laura to be talking about the Greek gods. Today we're going to be talking about something very exciting, we're going to be talking about the Greek gods. Obviously when we spoke to Ellen on her first episode, we discussed the wonderful god of theatre with girls, who is the Greek god of theatre. Dionysus, top great story. <laughs> Woo! A lot of plays and things and stuff like that were there to honour him. But gods were often omnipresent in theatre. Basically, they were always there in terms of in the character's thought, with what they said, with what the chorus said. That kind of made them powerful in a way because they didn't necessarily always have to be on stage to have that presence. They or they also represented something called the divine law. It literally just means that they kind of had like the overruling view. What was the path of the Greek gods? Well, the Greek gods were basically there to provide moral lessons kind of just brought about culture and tradition Greek gods were kind of seen as very different to how we know like a main god to be in other religions they were like humans they had thoughts and feelings they had impulses they weren't perfect Greek gods weren't completely powerful either they had to obey fate as well it's known in Greek mythology as I'm probably going to butcher the how I say this the moirai which basically are the three ladies with the string and the scissors. I don't know if you remember that from anything. That's in Hercules, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get started where we talk about all of the gods, we're going to be talking about 12 of them today. If we were to talk about every single god, we'd probably be here all year. They believed that there were gods of the earth, the sky, the wind, the fire, you know, earth, wind and fire. Do you remember? get on to a bit more about the Greek gods I think it's worth noting that before the 12 man Olympians that we're going to be talking about today there were actually gods before that there are a group of gods called the Titans who started off with Uranus which was Sky and Gaia that was Earth now two of the six Titans that we're talking about Cronus and Rhea their brother and sister especially mated and produced quite a few of the Mount Olympians that we'll be talking about today in order to think how on earth did the Olympians come to power well they basically overthrew their parents in a massive Titan war there are six original Titans was thrown into somewhere called Tartarus, which is basically hell on steroids. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Are your mum and dad into hell? <laughs> so the 12 <laughs> gods lived on Mount Olympus, and we will be beginning with the king of the gods, that is Zeus. So Zeus was king of the gods. He was kind of like the judge. He ruled over the heavens. He decided a lot of the things. But as well as sort of being the king of the gods do you know what else he actually controlled is it something to do with the weather i mean he's always pictured with a thunderbolt and i feel like if you upset him he would cause a storm yep you're right basically he did he controlled the weather and also was it a law and order he was indeed he basically was like the main judge as he was kind of leader of the gods if anyone had any problems they went to Zeus and Zeus sorted it all out for them. Mm. And he was married to his sister, who is known as Hera. Hera was the wife of Zeus. She was the goddess of the earth, heaven and love. As well as Hera, we also had Aphrodite, the goddess of love. And alongside Aphrodite, a completely different type of goddess, who is Athena. I think there's a place in Greece that might be named after her. Can you think of what that might be? Athens! <laughs> yes! All oh, right. So Athena was the goddess of wisdom and war strategy. She was very smart. She was a peacemaker. Everyone loved her. Athens was indeed named after her. This was because Poseidon and Athena had a battle amongst the mortals about how to get that name. So Poseidon brought up a saltwater spring for the people and said, here, have this and call your city after me. Athena planted an olive tree and the mortals debated and they decided that an olive tree was probably a better bet for them. Sidon was very angry but Athena was the peacemaker and I believe that might be where the term lending an olive branch might originate from. Being a smart woman she is, she's now um, the sort of gateway site for our university as well with Minerva (laughs) with that being her Roman name. So moving on to Poseidon. He was obviously the god of the sea but do you know what animals 
he was supposed to have allegedly created. Um, is it a horse? Yes, it was indeed. He allegedly mm. created a horse. Is that why when you see like waves in the sea and they're white, you call them white horses? Is yes. that just me? Yeah, I think it might be. Yes, I so have cool. never heard of that before. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Hades, who is god of the underworld. I'm sure we all know him from Hercules. Bubba. Name is Hades, Lord of the Dead. Hi, how you doing? He was known to be rather bad tempered. He actually got the underworld because Poseidon claimed the sea and Zeus claimed the sky. After that, we have a Apollo. Apollo was the god of music. He was the son of Zeus and he was known as being the intellect of the gods. So if there was ever to be a god on university challenge, this would probably be the one. He also sometimes represented the sun, even though he wasn't technically a sun god as well. And next up we have Ares. Ares was the god of war. He was the son of Zeus and Hera and was seen as a man who kind of controlled civil order and courage. Uh, but he's often depicted as being quite angry as well. So he kind of contrasts quite nicely with his sister Athena in the sense that they both go into war she's kind of more level-headed and he's just the impulsive one going in for the kill after that we have Artemis and Artemis was the goddess of hunting she also was the goddess of wild animals and she also looked after young children when they were born do you know what her other name is I think I know this because I've been watching the crown quite a lot is it Diana it is indeed mm. <laughs> yeah, but what's quite interesting about Artemis is that although or Diana is that although she was like the goddess of looking after children and childbirth she was actually a virgin goddess herself so she was kind of like the mother nature of the world that's kind of the way a lot of people saw her next up we have Demeter Demeter was goddess of the nurturing spirit and the harvest and I mean if we're going to talk about veganism here I would definitely say as a god she would be the vegan one <laughs> From that, we're going to go into some of the more obscure gods that you might have heard of but might not be as familiar with. We've got Hermes, the messenger god. He's got very cool shoes. So when you all kind of think about your parcel delivery, um, you know, mm. we've got DPG, <laughs> you've got Royal Mail, you've got Hermes. Do you know what else he actually invented? Could be something to do with travel he he kind of created roads which were associated with travel mm. he also created some really random things he invented the lyre the pipes the musical scale astronomy weight measures boxing gymnastics and the care of olive trees going back to those olives again that's it great he was, a, <laughs> he was a busy boy and after this we have hephaestus now hephaestus was god of fire he was a handyman he was a bit of a blacksmith but he also was kind of seen as a bit of a loser and got the nickname the lame god. So do you know how he actually got that nickname? Is he really uncool? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> ah. Did he have something wrong with his leg? Is it something to do with that? It actually is. Oh. So Hera threw him from Mount Olympus when he was born and he fell for nine days until he fell in the ocean which left him as just a permanent man with a limb. They really have no loyalty to their family. <laughs> also, nine days, like... How far was oh. it? And this leads us on to our last goddess, who is Hestia. Hestia is goddess of the hearth. There's kind of rumours that I suggest she was the firstborn, but also the lastborn, because apparently her father ate them all up again and then regurgitated them. But all we know about Hestia, she was one of the quieter gods. She just made sure that the hearth was always lit, which is quite a nice thing. She always kept the hearth lit at Mount Olympus. And going back to culture and tradition, a lot of people felt like they should keep a hearth lit in their houses so that they could sort of honour Hestia, which I think is quite a nice nurturing goddess to finish on. So there we are, ladies. There are the Greek gods for you. Thank you. That was really interesting, actually. I learned quite a lot from that. Yeah, some of those stories I was not expecting. Like, they definitely got weirder as they went on. <laughs> they yeah. definitely did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of incest, lots of olives. That's it. <laughs> oh. <laughs>